Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And over the weekend, I did some extensive, extensive searching for the integration of the networks between T-Mobile and Sprint. So if some of you are new on the channel, T-Mobile, as of April 2020, got the approval to fully merge with Sprint. So now T-Mobile is in the process of integrating the networks. So they're taking Sprint's Band 41 spectrum. They're adding it to their cell site and they're turning it on to, five, to the 5G network, which we're now, it's now known as N41. So NR stands for new radios. So that's new technology that's being added into the market to provide the 5G standard that the 3GPP set, I want to say last year, if I remember correctly. So what you're seeing here on screen is a T-Mobile site that has been integrated to the Sprint Spectrum. So the the thick panel that you're seeing in the middle, the larger panel, longer panel, that's the N71, Band 71 Spectrum that T-Mobile has also added to push their low band 5G. The panel that you're seeing to the right of that bigger, longer panel, the smaller square, that is the N41 Spectrum panel, massive MIMO, that T-Mobile is adding to their sites to broadcast the 5G, and that will produce the 5G speeds that we will see at a later time that T-Mobile has been bragging and advertising. Now, this site, of course, is not active yet. It's, it's just been installed recently. So it, there, there will be a, a, a process of this. They'll have to add it into the network via software. Then they'll have to optimize, and then they'll have to turn it on. And then, of course, you as the consumer will need a 5G device that can make use of that spectrum to fully be able to utilize the speed, efficiency, and the coverage from that 2.5. Now... What really surprised me, what I noticed over this weekend, I just didn't think that they would be this aggressive this soon. Now, just to give you guys a little backstory, now that the Sprint customer is considered a T-Mobile customer, I know the plans, I know all that's still separate, but the numbers, they're calculating Sprint on the market share, they're calculating Sprint and T-Mobile as one. So here, El Paso, very unique. T-Mobile has over 50% market share. This is one, I think this is the fourth or third biggest market in the entire company. So, of course, they would invest heavily in this market. So, the activity that I'm seeing here may be completely different from the activity that you're seeing. Your activity may be way slower than mine. But, again, here's another site. I think I was consulting with a buddy of mine locally that also helps me track the networks because El Paso is, is pretty large in landmass. There's there's Horizon City. There's different counties that belong to El Paso. So it's hard for me to cover the entire city. But with his help and with what I'm tracking, T-Mobile is already now since April anywhere from 50 to 75% complete here with adding Sprint's Spectrum onto the T-Mobile grid, which is a huge accomplishment. I couldn't tell you if it's closer to the 50 or if it's closer to the 75% mark. I still have not worked my way downtown or to the west side of town. So I'm still working on that. But here again, here's another site. You see the little small square, the large panel that's band 71 and band 41, N41. And that's what they're bragging about the most. So that's another site. Here we have another site. Like I said, there's a lot of sites. I've added more of these onto my Instagram and then this past weekend, I was tracking even more sites being done. And this is how some of it performed. I think they may have, I wasn't able to check because I was on the go, but they may, T-Mobile may have already added some of that Band 41 Spectrum onto LTE. As you see on the speed test, I was pulling 342 and then close to 50 on the upload. And then again, here's another performing. So it, those areas did not perform like this previously. Um, to my knowledge. So this is a great improvement. Also, on this one, there will be some pictures that I took of Verizon sites. So disregard those. But definitely some really, really good performance 
on the LTE side. Yep, this is one of the Verizon sites that's coming to the college. I'll show you guys those as well. That's that's where the panels are going to go underneath. Then here we have another T-Mobile site. I'm going to breeze through these really quickly. I think I got the point across so you guys can can fully see which <clears throat> which of the sites is uh, N41. Here's some cabinets. This this one still doesn't have a backup generator, so T-Mobile still has a lot of work to do on that. Here's another site with N41. It's the top, the small square to the left. And another one right here. And then another one. I, I actually found another one earlier today that I did not include in this. This is a brand new one. The cables are still hanging, so they're... They're freshly installing that one. This was another upgrade that they were working at the baseband unit. This is a new Verizon site that I tracked. Another T-Mobile site. So like I said, T-Mobile is uh, moving very, very, another one. They're moving very quickly. And then here's another speed test from another location. So again, T-Mobile here at least moving very, very quickly. I'm hearing they're breezing through Chicago as well, Philadelphia, New York City, um, Los Angeles as well. I'm hearing some good things. I'm hearing they're kind of slowing down a bit in Phoenix, but sh should soon ramp it up again in about a month or two. So this is definitely good to see. It looks like they're going to exhaust the CapEx for the remainder of this year. And then we should have a newer one next year, which I'm anticipating in the q3 or q4 quarterly earnings we should get in guidance and get a feel for what they are going to spend next year it should be likely more than what we saw this year i think they should next year get to that 10 to 12 billion range that they've been talking about i personally think they need to get to that 13 14 billion dollar range to become more effective i know i know they need to get to that 18 19 20 billion dollar range but I think right now they just don't have the the assets or the additional revenue to justify that high of an increase to its investors. So I think they still need to be efficient. I think they, they stick around the $13, $14 billion range roughly. And I think they stay there for a couple of years until they can get added revenue from the home internet. Maybe they launch the TV. And then so if they increase their assets, I think at that point they can justify increasing the capital to the Verizon and AT&T levels. So if you have been on the channel, make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter. I do post videos and I do post the the pictures on there so you guys can see. And I'm tracking daily that new N41 ads are coming. So make sure to follow follow the Instagram and the Twitter if you are new to the channel and you like the updates like these, you want to interact with the community, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you are notified when I do upload the content. Thanks again for watching. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.